Welcome to Papa Junk Shop. Just going to do a quick video today for, I guess you would call it maybe a safety item for your shop. Um, a while back, I think when I was working on the uh, wet grinder, <clears throat> when I was checking out the motor for it, had two speeds and I didn't have a diagram for it or anything, so I had to figure out the wiring. And I use, well I have a, a heater in series that I use with, with this switch. Um, <clears throat> so if there's a short or something it just heats this up instead of tripping a fuse or burning things up. And this one I just have a switch on this outlet. And I thought I had that motor figured out so I plugged it in here to try it and when I turned this switch on it wasn't right and it finally killed this this switch it doesn't work anymore it doesn't shut off it welded the contacts right together so and, and this one over here is on all the time which I plug my soldering iron and, and things like that in so I'm going to take this one and move it over here and make it so it's always on and I'm going to eliminate this one um, out of here because I priced these switches and they're ridiculous they're like $12 for one of them so and quite often I want another plug two plugs at the same time so I'm going to put in a separate one here got a double pull double throw switch and I'm going to turn this outlet on and off with it's going to be independent and then the safety item I was talking about I got a little pencil soldering iron here <coughs> and last time when I was working on the Onan circuit board soldering that little relay in on the uh, circuit board <coughs> I was anxious to try it and I forgot to unplug my soldering iron and I come out the next day and my soldering iron was still on and that that could have been a disaster thank goodness it's in this this holder thing and I, I did it once before too it's not the first time so what I'm gonna do is <clears throat> I got a timer and I think it was probably or a bathroom fan or something like that and it's a mechanical timer and I'm not sure if it runs for an hour or 30 minutes but plenty of time enough for a soldering iron so I'm going to hook that into this outlet and then when I want to use a soldering iron or something I won't have to worry about forgetting and leaving it plugged in it'll shut off after whatever time it is, half an hour, an hour, not sure what the timer is. But I just thought it would be a good idea to do that. So that's going to be today's project. And I'm going to put a separate cord on each box. And I in turn plug those into a uh, plug-in strip that has a breaker and stuff in it also. So. I'm going to get started on it and show you as I go along. I just got thinking about what I said. This is, is not a double pull, double throw switch. It's a double pull, single throw switch. And it's rated for 2 horsepower at 115 volts. Just thought I'd better make that correction. Okay, I got the original converted. Um, this is always on now. This is just like it always used to be switched with the test leads. And thought I'd show you how that works. This is always on. This is a 750 watt light bulb. You can see it's pretty bright. So if I'm working on something and I'm not like a motor or something and I'm not sure about it and I want to reduce the power and and make sure I'm not going to trip a break or burn something up I would just I'm just going to clip it on this light bulb and I'll turn this switch on 
and you can see it gently comes on and that's only going to be about half as bright because half the voltage is in the bulb and the other half is over here. Now if I was working on something and it, and it had a short or something in it and I'm going to simulate a short here. I don't suggest that you guys do this stuff but I'm pretty comfortable with it. But if I put a short here you'll notice that the heating element is turning red so all the power is going to the heating element now instead of tripping the breaker or burning something up so that's how that works next I'm gonna get the uh, one with just the switched outlet working so I get a little bit of that stuff ready and I'll let you watch over my shoulder as I do that. Okay, I think I got my goodies ready for this part of the project. Drill a couple holes in the bottom of the box here. That's going to be to fasten it on the back of the bench with a couple of drywall screws or wood screws. And I put a Romex connector in the back with a uh, plastic bushing. And I've got a short piece of, uh, I think it's number 14 cord. It's going to go in there. And then these two wires, I, well, these three, I've got a hot neutral in the, in the ground. I've tinned them so they'll uh, go on the screw terminals a little nicer. You could put crimp on connectors if you wanted to or or just twist them so this is probably a Chinese cord because the colors aren't black and white but the uh, how I remember it is black and blue are the same and brown and ground are the same so double pull switch we're going to be able to hook both of them on here so I'm going to hook the ground on this side And a hot one over here. And then here we'll do the same. We've got a couple of jumper wires that are tinned. The white one will go on the neutral side. smart no was it I put it on the wrong way. I unwound it and then why not on. Okay, let's do that again. Now just a disclaimer for this stuff. If you're not comfortable working with electrical stuff, have somebody else do it for you. Make sure everything is unplugged. I'm doing this just to show you how I do it. I'm not recommending that you do it. And then these two wires are going to go over to the outlet. And the, uh, the hot wire, the black one, goes on the brass colored screw. white one goes on the bright colored screw, silver colored, whatever. And 
in the ground wire. This switch is old enough it doesn't have a ground on it, but this will all be grounded when it's all assembled. So the ground wire is going to go directly on the receptacle, which will ground the, the box and, and that switch and everything. So now, I just need to mount the switch in the cover. Outlet isn't going to go in this kind of a box. I'll say break these tabs off. So that's all mounted. This hole was from something I'm not aware of what it was for. It's just I'm using what I got, like always. And then we'll just pull this back like so. And we can just so that's just thinner and inside. We'll tighten this clamp down and the wire. Cord. You don't want to smash it on there, you just want to make it snug so it won't come out. You can apply too much pressure and actually cut into the wires. Okay, that's good. So now all I gotta do is put the two screws in the cover. I can't do that until I screw it down on the back. So this one is ready to go. I'm going to work on one with a timer next. Okay, before I plug this in, I'm going to do a little safety check. Um, going to go from each side of the plug to the case with my ohm meter. And I'm not getting anything there. Not getting anything there. Now on the ground we should have a, a connection. And we do. And the switch is turned on. So I think we're good to go to go ahead and plug her in. Something's physically wrong, my switch won't shut off. Well, I guess I'll take the cover back off and check that out. It turned on okay, but it won't turn off. So apparently there's a mechanical problem, maybe with the, the mounting or something. So I'll check it out and let you know. Yeah, okay, that problem solved. Apparently, this is an older switch. Apparently it needed more room to make the actual switch so I had to elongate the the uh, rectangular opening here for the switch now now she works good so, so all that does is turn that outlet on and off so if I'm working on something here and uh, I don't want to keep plugging and unplugging it I can just switch it on and off with this switch and because it's a double double pull switch it shuts both sides of the uh, line off so makes it a little safer so now we can work on the timer one 
now the timer one's coming along. I got the cord run through the back, same as the other one. And the cord comes in and it goes to, this is a uh, two pole switch also. So it comes into the switch, comes out of the switch and goes over to the outlet. And the ground is hooked onto the outlet again because there's no provision on here for a ground. So it's just a matter of mounting the, the switch and the outlet in the cover, mounting this on the bench, putting the cover on and giving her a try. See in a little bit. Okay, got it all assembled, mounted, all that good stuff. Let's see, let's turn on the... I'll just use this as a... We'll use the bench light as a, as a test for it. I just turned it just a little bit. It should only go for a short time. And turn off. You can hear it ticking. And I don't think you can turn this one. Yeah, this one doesn't turn backwards. I'm not going to force it. doesn't want to go easily. I'm not going to force it. There she goes. So, I'll have to try it out and see how long it takes for it to make a complete cycle. I'm thinking half an hour maybe. Not sure, but that'll work good. I plug my soldering iron into that. Now I don't have to worry about it. So, or there's other things that you could plug into that too you might want to put on a timer. Um, just if you're going to do this make sure you're comfortable doing electrical stuff and be safe and if you're not comfortable have somebody do it that, that knows what they're doing but it may save your may save your shop from burning or doing some damage so if you like this one, give me a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe. See you next time.